guys and welcome back to my channel. If you're new around here, my name is Aymara and I'm now in my second year doing medicine at the University of Nottingham. And in today's video, I'm gonna be telling you the complete story of how I got into medical school, right from the beginning, right from my motivation to do medicine. Now, this definitely isn't the perfect way to get into medical school. You may learn some things along the way which you could use in order to improve your chances of getting into medical school and also learn about some things to avoid in order to increase your chances of getting into medical school. As always, I hope you enjoy the video and make sure to like this video, subscribe and turn the post notifications on. So I don't know when the idea first came to me to become a doctor. This sounds very cliche as do all reasons for wanting to do medicine, but I think I've always known I wanted to be a doctor. I think the idea was kind of introduced to me when I was younger. None of my family are in the medical field or scientific field whatsoever. So the idea of becoming a doctor became more realistic to me because one, I really felt comfortable and quite happy in science lessons um, in secondary school because I came from quite a bad primary school and then moving to a private school um, it meant that people had already been studying maths at a very high level for many years, English, sports, so I really felt like science was the only one where we had a level playing field and I felt like I could like properly prove myself. Also I always found myself getting drawn to volunteering opportunities or leadership opportunities and obviously when you're in year seven to year nine these opportunities are very small. This included things such as coaching young years, how to swim, becoming something like library captain. Obviously these things are trivial now looking back and I definitely didn't include them in my personal statement. But now looking back retrospectively and seeing that I was drawn to these leadership roles or these roles where it was about interacting with someone else, I can see that those are qualities that were kind of being born in me that are very necessary if you want to be a doctor. So in summary, my motivation to do medicine was very much because I felt like my personality would suit becoming a doctor. and. Also, I definitely enjoyed science because I felt like it was something which I could excel at. So in terms of voluntary experience, once I got to sort of year 11, year 12 and year 13, I really felt like I had to step up my game. So initially this was through teaching. So both in year 10, year 11 and year 12, I was involved in two volunteering programs where we went to surrounding schools and we taught pupils. So the first subject I taught was English and then I went on to science and Spanish. And these were volunteering programs hosted by my school. And this really gave me the opportunity to develop my communication skills because these were people that weren't my age, that weren't at my educational level. So I really had to think about the way I was communicating with them in order so they understood what the learning objective was. And that mirrors some of the doctor's um, duties, which are to be able to explain to a patient whether the patient's a doctor themselves or whether there is a language barrier with the patient and the patient is hard of hearing or they're elderly or they're very young, being able to adapt your communication skills in order to give them a piece of information. So alongside all this teaching experience and I've been a tutor since year 10 I'm still a tutor now which even though that's a job and you're getting paid for it you can still include that in your personal statement aside from this teaching experience I also got involved in two main voluntary schemes and these are the ones that I really spoke at length about in my personal statement in fact the voluntary section of my personal statement was the largest section because I felt like it was the most important and it was the part of my experience which I had the most to show for so the first main voluntary scheme I got involved with was volunteering at a elderly care home where most of the residents were disabled and our job was to go in once a week um, over like a year and a half and help the elderly residents with arts and crafts. So I was involved with one particular gentleman who was um, suffering from Parkinson's and this made the tremors obviously very difficult to do arts and crafts so over the period of my volunteering my relationship with him really grew and he was able to feel more confident and calm around me and not so insecure that you know he wasn't able to do the arts and crafts um activities as well as perhaps some of the other residents and you know we really grew like a friendship he would tell me about his wife who was another resident at the care home i'd tell him about my life about how school was going um and this was such a special time because one it completely threw me off in terms of what it means to communicate with someone because it became much more about non-verbal communication you know reassuring him guiding his hand in order so that he could draw more easily and the second voluntary scheme that I got involved with was one that I created myself throughout my time at secondary school there were a lot of people that came up to me telling me that they were dealing with mental health issues even from as young as like year seven and year eight as an adult let alone a year seven or year eight it's extremely difficult to know what to do to help someone who's dealing with a mental health issue um, and I definitely felt inequipped. So then I went to my school, I went to the charities 
organiser um, and I said to them, I want to create a scheme which provides mental health first aid training to all the students. And from there she was like, okay, just go away, sort out the ins and outs and we can talk about it and we can, you know, feed it up through the school. So I spent probably a term, a whole term, so that's like three months creating a structure for this and this really tested my time management skills a lot in year 12 it was such a big jump from GCSE so to be organizing all of this at the same time as that was very difficult at the same time as leadership I was having to sit in meetings with the head teacher the deputy head teacher or the head of section and talk to them almost as an equal saying this is what I think we need and this is how I want to provide it at the same time I was learning a lot about the mental health needs of young people the idea of the scheme was that a few six warmers would be taught mental health first aid and they in pairs would each teach a class in different year groups and obviously what we taught different year groups was adapted so in the training we'd cover what is mental health what is mental ill health the importance of getting help what resilience is what is well-being and how we can do things to improve our mental well-being and then we covered specific uh, mental health issues such as anxiety depression eating disorders self-harm etc and we spoke about what it is sort of to debust any myths that people had about it or preconceptions signs to look out for most importantly we looked at what to do if someone comes to you presenting with those mental health issues and obviously the students could use the same information on themselves after many talks with many 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 teachers we finally were able to roll out the training so i trained two year groups over year 12 and year 13 i trained people in the year above and the people year below me and they then went on to train in mental health first aid year 7 year 8 year 9 and year 10 so this was a massive feat for us because i was the only consistent teacher over these two years so this was two afternoons every week in year 13 that i would have to spend an hour and a half tutoring year 12s and year 13s in mental health first aid using the mental health first aid england training book so this was perhaps one of the best things i've ever done in my life i won't lie and it was definitely a big part of my personal statement In terms of work experience, I am um, not gonna lie, I was very lucky because one of my friends, his dad was uh, a very senior GP in the NHS. So he was able to hook me up with one of his GP practices so that I could go in and shadow a doctor over like five days. Um, I didn't just shadow a doctor, I did spend a lot of my time in reception, working in the back office, calling patients to book them in for flu jabs. Through the few patients I did manage to see, I did learn a lot about the role that a GP plays and how important it is that a doctor has certain qualities in order to be able to really provide the care that the patient needs. Additionally, I was able to go on two tours around a hospital. So I had a tour led by a doctor at UCLH, um, University College London Hospital and King's College London Hospital, which showed me the structure of the hospital at the same time as the pressure that a hospital experiences um, so it was all very eye-opening Alongside this, I had, did a lot of academic supercurricular activities and this included um, doing an EPQ and I wrote this on acute myeloid leukemia and then actually this inspired me to go on and give a talk about one of the sections that I spoke about within my EPQ which was about how your socioeconomic status can affect how likely you are to suffer and die from leukemia which was very interesting and I got to take questions from the audience. I also did um, two more essays. I did one essay on whether you could prevent PTSD or was it the neurobiological interventions for preventing PTSD which won an essay prize at school and I also did an essay as part of chemistry about the different drugs that you could use and their structure their chemical structures for treating arrhythmias I also went to lectures so I went to a few lectures um, given by GPs themselves like talking about like resource allocation budgeting um, but also went to talks like more scientific talks and I also read a book recommended by a doctor called The Citadel which is an amazing book which talks about the health and qualities experienced by people in 1900s Britain and then last but not least super curricular so I was a competitive swimmer for most of my time at secondary school I also did bronze and silver Duke of Edinburgh so I spoke about how having to be rigorous in my training swimming has given me the discipline to put in long hours even when I necessarily didn't want to and obviously Duke of Edinburgh has enabled me to work well as team boost team morale etc so as you guys have just heard I separated my personal statement into four sections my work experience my voluntary experience my super curriculars and my extracurriculars and I think what I found hardest about this is picking the highlights and making sure that I rinsed out these highlights not just said I did this then I did this and this is something that I speak about in my personal statement video which you guys should check out because this is information that I got from doctors they said you have to not tell the person reading your personal statement I'm empathetic 
let them infer it. So you know when I was talking about doing voluntary experience with a patient suffering from Parkinson's, I didn't say and I had to be very empathetic in order to help them. No, I used STAR, which I've spoken about a million times and said, right, the situation, I was volunteering at an elderly care home, the task, I had to help a patient suffering from Parkinson's with arts and crafts, the action, um, when he became agitated, I tried to calm him and reassure him so he felt more confident at doing the tasks. Or I provide guidance by, you know, guiding his hand. And the result was that he felt more excited and he looked forward to doing arts and crafts and went before he kind of shied away from it. So you see, if I'm telling you that story, you're more likely to think, wow, yeah, she is empathetic. Much more than if I just said, yeah, I am empathetic. Literally the worst part of the whole application. So year 12 summer, I was experiencing a lot in terms of my mental health issues, etc. And not only that, but it's a very difficult time for any student to be rising through the UK CAT because obviously everyone's out enjoying their year 12 summer and you're kind of stuck in a library just doing silly questions. And also I don't think my brain handles those kinds of questions very well. For example, um, you know, I know how to do maths and I know how to do simple maths, but for some reason the simple maths in the UK CAT seemed so difficult and it seemed so abstract. In fact, abstract reasoning actually was my worst segment. For example, the day before um, the my actual UK CAT exam, I scored 300 on the abstract reasoning section. Anyway, what I would have done different was I would have revised a lot earlier. I think I probably started revising in August and my exam was in September. I would have started revising around June. I would have watched a lot more videos on YouTube trying to see how people tackled the UK CAT. But yeah, as I said, I would have done a little bit over a long time rather than just done like eight hour days like for the last two weeks before my exam. In case you guys want to know, I ended up getting 2,620 and a band one. So the band one really saved me and it's not the best score, it's probably the worst score you guys have heard of, it's a 605 on average, but you know, I did take pride in a lot of the other aspects of my application. So let's move on to how I decided my medical school. So I didn't want to go to Oxford because I felt like their course wasn't the way I wanted it to be. You know, it's three years purely lecture based and then you only do your clinical experience right at the very end. And I'm someone that, as I said, I always really had an affinity for voluntary experience. I always really wanted to talk to people because that's the real reason why I want to do medicine. Um, also, I thought it was like too competitive. I didn't want to be in London because I didn't want to live at home and I didn't want to justify only living 20 minutes down the road but paying like an extra 10K. So I wanted to go to outside of London. So I chose Bristol University yeah, Exeter University, Nottingham University and Birmingham University. I got offers for Exeter and Nottingham. I didn't get an offer for Bristol, obviously because they're notorious for wanting very high UK CAT scores, so I don't know why I still applied. I thought maybe they'd overlook my UK CAT score, but that wasn't the case. Birmingham also, I even did the online, it says like if you're likely to get in based on your stats. They told me not, but I literally thought it was a glitch because I put in my GCSE grades, I put in my A-level grades or predictions. So I was like, how can they say no? Anyway, I still applied, didn't get in. Did get an offer from Exeter because they prioritise predictions and my predictions were A star, A star, A star. And Nottingham looks holistically at everything. So your GCC grades, which were nine A stars and two A's, your A level predictions, etc. Let's talk about revising for A level exams. So um, I'm not gonna lie, year 13 was a very difficult year. I felt like a lot of my teachers, especially for biology and physics, were not good. Um, so I had to teach myself a lot of the content. It meant, for example, doing my notes in my own time because I felt like the notes or the lessons that they were giving me weren't good. However, for chemistry, my teachers were very good, but I don't know if any of you guys have done chemistry. Chemistry is notoriously hard for getting an A star. Um, you have to get 83% plus in exams, which are quite difficult. So. I really tried so hard in every single test that I got in lessons. I'd really like almost compete with myself and the people around me to get the best mark. I think for this, my biggest tip is don't think that your teachers are gonna give you what you need to do well in your exams. Literally, they only finished the course a few days before we left for study leave in May, which was literally a few days before my exams. So what I did was that I finished the course myself, looking at chem revise, looking at physics and maths tutor for biology and physics notes, using the textbook in my own time while we were still at school so I could use the whole of the Easter holidays just to revise myself. In physics, everyone did maths, I didn't. So I would literally, even if my teacher was embarrassed that I was so bad at the math side of physics, I would go up to him every single lunch and said, look, can you please help me on these questions? The second tip I have, apart from finishing the course as soon as possible so that you have the most time to revise, is to do as many questions as possible. I'll show you a photo here. I did a stack about this big of past papers over my time revising for year 13 exams because the only thing that's gonna make you guys do well in your A-level exams is past paper questions. Looking at your notes 10 times won't because the hardest part of A-levels is the application question. So the more of these you practice, the more you get your exam technique perfected, the better you'll do. 
All in all, it has been a roller coaster of a time applying to medical school. There have been highs like the mental health project, like racing to get an A star in chemistry, like volunteering at the elderly care home or meeting patients during my work experience. And there have been lows like having to rise for UK CAT with the uncertainty that I might not ever get into medical school because I was getting 300 the day before my exam. But that is what medicine's gonna be. There's not one candidate out there that is excellent at everything. I know people that literally scored in the 800s for their UK CAT that got predicted four A stars but do you think they ever did anything to help their school to help their community no so everyone's a different type of doctor some people are better at the science some people are better at working with people whatever you're best at rinse that out because that's what's going to make you shine at the same time don't tell yourself I'm bad at the UK cat I'm bad at this I'm bad at that no you're not bad at it all you just haven't had enough time to prepare or you just haven't found the thing that makes the penny drop so if you're unsure if you are feeling insecure about whether you're good enough to be a doctor don't let that be what's stopping you. Give it your all because I'm sure that anyone watching this is going to make an amazing doctor. So I hope I didn't go through this video too fast. I'm in a bit of a rush but I guess that helped me be more concise. If you have any questions on applying to medical school check out my playlist. Um, it's basically a whole series on applying to medical school, talking about personal statement, choosing your medical school exams and I'll be adding to this series as weeks go on. Or don't be scared to leave me a comment or DM if you have any questions. But yeah that is all from me and take care guys. Good luck. Thank you.